Welcome to Foreigners and Friendship, a series of podcasts. We present a number of bonus tracks connected to our radio show. You can listen to conversations with artists and activists, reports from festivals and other larger events, essays, reviews, poetry and letters. We see ourselves as part of a non-binary rebellion with the intention of creating a language and a human condition by on race, ethnicity, gender, sex and class. Tear down these walls, dismantle the statues of power and meet the other with an open spirit. We are in Cape Town in South Africa, a place we have been several times before. Last time we were here, we had a heavy experience in District 6, which you can learn about in a previous podcast from October 2023. This time we are in Cape Town to participate in Cape Town Art Fair, which we have been looking very much forward to because it is the missing link in our chain of art exhibitions around the world. A couple of days before the opening of the fair, we met the director, Laura Vicente, in Cape Town International Convention Center. She explains that the fair was taken over by an Italian company a number of years ago, and she joined the fair five years ago. She has a background in architecture, and she has also been working extensively with contemporary art. We here bring the conversation with her, who took place before the art fair on February 13th, 2024. Good afternoon. We are here with Laura. Laura Vincenti. Vincenti, Vincenti. It is actually Italian yeah. pronounced. Italian. Yeah. <laughs> Laura Vincenti, who is the director of Cape Town Art Fair. Yes. And we will have a conversation about the art fair. So firstly, I would like to ask you to, uh, to present yourself and then talk about this particular art fair. Uh, good afternoon. Thank you for like interviewing me, to give me this opportunity. Uh, yes, my name is Laura Vincenti, I'm Italian, architect, and I've been involved in the art world for, I would say now, 25 years. I've started my career in Italy, and I've been involved in uh, many art and culture events, including uh, international shows, fairs, international exhibitions, museums, yeah. biennials. Then I decided at some point to move to South Africa around 10 years ago for private reasons. And at the time I said to myself, it is enough with the art world. I want to go back and do the architect. I've done a few things in Africa and then in South Africa as an architect. And then as my passion has always been art, uh, I belong from a family of collectors, I've been exposed to museums, exhibitions since I was a little child, so it's in my DNA. And eventually I, I arrived here. So I started my collaboration with the fair in 2015. That was the third year of, the, of this fair because the very first edition has been in 2013. So when I arrived here, the fair was very, very small, very local. The owner at that time was a South African company that then um, sold all the shares to an Italian company. Uh, the year after, that is Fiera Milano, that is the actual owner and organizer of the okay. fair. I started my adventure here in, in Cape Town and it was very challenging because my task was to grow the fair and to, and to make it like the fair in Africa, also to bring a lot of international uh, 
galleries, collectors, and through my, of course, my network in Europe. Uh, I mean, it hasn't been easy, but uh, I have to say that it's been a wonderful experience. Mm -hmm. It was very welcoming, and oh, the people helped me a lot. It was like fresh air for me mm -hmm. to work uh, to work in this context. And over the years, the fair grown a lot. Now it's the biggest fair in Africa, and I think the only very international art fair in Africa. And it's on the international calendar of art fairs. So it got very good reputations abroad. Our lineup of galleries is of very high level. We got galleries from of course, from, from South Africa, from the continent, and from uh, mainly Europe, a few from the United States. Overall, this year we will have 115 exhibitors representing 24 countries, bringing more than 400 artists representing 50 countries. So we got like artists from India, Mexico, Brazil. Uh, all over the world. That's very exciting. Also because it's really a chance for the city to mm. to get to see something that they normally don't yeah. see. Mm. The fair is not just for art professionals. It's not intimidating. It's for like the general public to come and see what's going on in the art world and to get the feeling of being part of something. I always say to people, come and ask questions because it's actually the fair is, is for them, it's a platform for everyone. It is deliberately that it has to be an international fair. It has to have this international outlook. Yeah. This is what you're saying. Because I'm, when you're saying it, I was thinking about that two years ago I went to Art Joburg and, and Art Joburg have kind of changed the path. They are saying now we want to focus on okay. actually Johannesburg yes. mostly. And then there's something else. Thing. But it seems that your perspective here on the Cape Town Art Fair has, an, has, has a different yeah. uh, angle, so to speak. Exactly. That's why... That you want, you want to have this outlook so that people come to to Cape Town and then Cape Townian can see the world here. So to yeah, speak. no, that's why I mean we can coexist uh, in the same country because I think there is no space in South Africa for two big international fairs. But what uh, the Jabuk Art Fair is doing is to to do something that is very Joburg for so people from Joburg. And it is wonderful because it's a different ecosystem yeah. and it works perfectly for that kind of needs. Mm. Cape Town is a bit more um, international when yeah. it comes to visitors. Awesome. I mean, I love Joburg. I, I have to say that I, I really love Joburg. Two different stories, <laughs> That's a different I would story. say. <laughs> Cape Town is more like got that European uh, feeling that yeah. people love. There is the ocean, the mountain. Yeah. So it appeals a lot also to tourists and to people that have the second house in Cape Town. Yeah. That's why, I mean, there are a lot of international people that, yeah. uh, that Cape Town is the second yeah. home. If, you, if we think about what is what is really on the continent, there's Artjoburg and then there's Cape Town, there's this uh, ex Lagos, okay. and of course there's the Car Vignale, but but the Vignale is a little bit a different story from from a Cape from from a, from a, a fair, I think. So, yeah. so I mean, maybe you, you can't compare them like that thing, but but this is what 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 immediately I am aware of that if if you think about these bigger scales uh, exhibitions, they tried okay. to make something in Kampala years ago, but it kind of is it really now also in Kampala? They started like in many in many countries. They started like small fairs uh, all around. But then I think the biennials were more popular because they, yeah. I mean there is the Lubumbashi biennial, the yeah. Dakar biennial. Yeah. That is actually the oldest biennial uh, in Africa. There are many biennials in yeah. Africa. 
Africa, but not that many fairs. Like, for instance, the fair in Marrakech, that is 154. Yeah, I Who mean, is actually there, or has just been there now, I think in Marrakech, been, yeah, I think last, last weekend. Week, yeah. Yeah. It's more focused on Africa, on the continent. That's why it's called 154. Because yeah, I went to I, when they were in Paris. I went there, and it's mm. and I think it's in some ways I got the feeling that that here we have more like a network than than a than a fair, so to speaking. So there's a difference between how can you how can you expand networks and create relationships exactly. inside the art world and an art fair, which is a more Excuse me for the for, for the for, yeah commercially uh, and and also deliberately commercial. Yeah. Now there are two different, yeah. completely different models. Yeah, and also like our audience and clients are uh, not just from the continent, so that's the main difference, and also the beauty of this fair. I think actually it's your coffee. No, I haven't asked for the coffee. Oh, you didn't ask for it? No. no, okay. It's too long for you. I I misunderstood you. No, 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 no. no. Okay. it's for you. So it's a very particular world because, I mean, you, you, it's, it's, a, it's a great way of having on the same place galleries from all over the world and galleries from South Africa and the mm. continent. And what I always keep saying that is not African art. We're not talking about African art. No. We're talking about contemporary art from Africa. Because we, we're not saying European art or Asian No, no, exactly. Art. That is all true. Yeah. So it's like I'm always a bit annoyed when people ask me what's African art, what's... It's not, I mean, they speak the same language. It's just a geographical provenance. It makes the difference. Yeah, but, but, but in the terms problem, of history yeah, and culture. Yeah, I agree with you. But the problem is, I think sometimes that that when when people are using the word African, it, there's something really weird coming along, like in rhetoric. It, it is not only a geographical, continental boundary, but there's right. also something, some value, or exactly. something, and 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 it is strange because we, we everybody actually wants to get rid of it, but it's. It's kind of gluing itself. It's kind of gluing, and I think slowly it will it will happen. But still, now we're talking about African art. I mean, people talk about African art to connotate. It's not ideal because I mean, I I can compare a work from an artist based in South Africa to another one that is based in Paris. Yeah. And I mean, of course, the history is different, the culture is different, but it doesn't interfere on a negative connotation. It interferes in, in a good way. So why we have to connotate with a geographical... If we are going to justify it, I think then you could say that, that there's a lot of people who think that, okay, Art from specific kind of the world should be more visible in the international mm. agenda. I think maybe this is some of the background. But the problem is that it, at the same time, it becomes a little bit. It becomes like an anthropology. Eh? Yeah. We have to. We are looking you differently, differently at, <laughs> at, at this yeah. geographical boundary than than others. Instead of just talking about exactly what is art and what is art. Yeah. Uh, and it's also like quite nice to see at this fair how, for instance, how the different artists from different countries in the world are dialoguing, are doing a dialogue together. Yeah, yeah. And also like we got many international galleries that are representing uh, artists from Africa or from the diaspora yeah. and vice versa. We got like local galleries that are representing artists from abroad, is quite a mixed, uh, yeah. a mixed world uh, that it makes the fair like very interesting because it speaks to uh, people that want maybe to see something from the region or yeah. from the continent. Yeah or other people that may be local, that are not that may much exposed to international art, to see yeah. what's the new trend, maybe in a yeah. country in the 
UK, in France, in Italy, and, and, and be, being exposed to that. There is kind of a, a logic in if you see art from different kind of geographical perspectives, that is for, for the art viewer and, and also for a lot of artists, that is that is interesting. Yeah. It's interesting. Is it, is it different? It's different. It's just geography matters, so to speak, in that way that, that do we, does it does it really change if the perspective, does Cape Town Art Fair deliver something different from, from art? Art Paris, for example. Yeah. Uh, I think that is an interesting question, and, and this is also legitimate to discuss that. Eh? Mm. If the lo- location of the art fair has an influence, of course, the location has an influence. Um, what I always say that a fair is. It's a, it's a great moment for people to mingle and and create a, a dialogue because at the very end what is important in the art world is to create connections regardless your provenance, uh, your uh, religion, yeah. your gender, it doesn't matter. Yeah. It's, a, it's a great opportunity for not just for artists but for the art professionals and the public to to get to to get to know each other in a different way, to share a common passion, and to yeah, and to live the same experience. For me, I found it like stunning to to, to be in a different uh, place in the world because I grew up in I grew up in Italy, as a different culture but at the same time finding a common ground in the art world. If we are talking about this edition that we are now going to experience and, and the curating of that, uh, what, what, are, what can we expect? I can see that, that if you look at the program, there's kind of different sections, which is a very common way of constructing an art fair. So there's this Biennale, this Venice section, which is a kind of a preview, as I understand, of what South Africa is presenting in, in Venice. Maybe it will be the last time South Africa is there, I heard, <laughs> but, <laughs> but uh, we don't know yet. And, and then there's other sections also, eh? So, so, but can we speak a little bit about what, what, is, uh, what kind of thoughts uh, do you have about uh, the, co- the actual creating? As an architect, I, I always try to to organize the space and mm. curate the space as it was in a city, like a small city. So for me, the corridors are streets, uh, the sections are neighborhoods. I try to create like small squares for people to gather. Um, and of course, the floor plan, the layout influence influences like enormously also uh, the curatorial um, mm. practice more yeah. connected to content. Um, I, I I've created the floor plan uh, trying to highlighting the different sections in a very clearly way to easy people that are like to, to have a, like a very um, smooth flow inside and to understand exactly every time where you are. Signage with something that gives put the attention towards that. I've tried to, to think about that, connecting each section, each neighbors to, to the other. Mm. And each neighbor's section has been curated by different curators. Yeah. I curated the main section that links, in a way, all the other section of the fair mm. and other curators have curated the, 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 the curated sections. So you should look at it like kind of a, a neighborhood or a city or, I mean, if you talk about yeah. streets and, and neighborhoods and neighbors or, yeah. or this is how you think about it as an architect or, or how should I understand this architectural perspective uh, because... I mean, to go on in the metaphory of the, yeah. of, of the, of the city, um, I'm not talking about zoning that is like an old concept in yeah. the urban planning. 
I'm talking about uh, just defining few areas, neighborhoods, yeah. and having them in conversation. That's the most important yeah. thing. So it's not, they're not divided, they're not confined, it's like a very fluid. Or because you mean it, it has to be, it is also done to the to the visitor, so to speak, yeah. that, that the visitor has to be, or we have, or maybe exactly. also the artist has to be able to to, to float around in a, exactly. in a maybe a smooth or, or, or some logical or good way. Yeah. There is a kind of fil rouge that links all the sections and all the all the booths all around the fair. The, the theme of this year is unbound for the curated section. That means breaking free from constrictive narratives and uh, pushing the boundaries. That is actually is a very broad concept, but it's exactly what art should be: pushing boundaries of your imagination and feel free to to imagine or dream uh, a different world. To, yeah, to imagine something else or something that we did not think yeah. would be possible. Also stimulate your thoughts, provoking yeah. you. Yeah. That's what yeah. art is about. It's not yeah. just like, of course, it's yeah. like giving you an aesthetic vision. It's very much about uh, posing questions and that could potentially not have in answers, but it, it allows you to provoke yourself and, and maybe dialogue with other people mm -hmm. like yeah. around that concept of that yeah. of that provocation. How how does the how is the curatorial structure here? Because you are kind of the main curator and then you have chosen different others who are then curating parts of the fair. So, but, is it, but is it kind of a collective process or how, how does it work practically? Um, uh, so I'm the director of the fair and also I'm curating the overall uh, fair and I, I have appointed different curators uh, according to what I was thinking, I, I, I thought before the, the theme of the, the sections and then I thought about what could have been the best curator for that section. Yeah. Okay. Of course, we, we are open to spontaneous uh, candidates. Uh, I'm very open to, to yeah. everyone that wants to curate the fair. It's just we have to find a common ground and also a way of working and thinking that is like... Uh, in it, al it also has to make sense as a, to make as a, sense. As a full body, exactly. so to speak. Every fair is kind of constructed around galleries, see? so therefore I'm sometimes I'm thinking about it is a little yes. bit a complicated process because the galleries are, are somehow deciding who they are bringing or you are, you are of course choosing the galleries but there's this a little bit um, collaborative in a, in process a, that, a, that you cannot exchange. really control what the gallery do in, in detail or... Not in detail but of course there is a first period where you plan in the fair, the next fair, that is the, is the time where I'm traveling and, and other person of my team are traveling with me, scouting new galleries, new artists, get a chance to know more about what's going on in the world. And when we identify the, the, gal the potential galleries, of course, we start the conversation and it's always about dialogue between yeah. the two parties and then we we have a selection committee um, that uh, i wouldn't say judge because it's not a nice word but no. that uh, give advice and uh, choose the galleries yeah. that will be part of the next edition and since that moment we start a conversation it is more on the work, on the artists and then the works, but mainly on which arts, because maybe you have chosen like three artists that are perfect and wow, or maybe the, the constellation committee can be a kind of advising committee saying maybe 
would be more uh, good for the fair, uh, for the market, uh, if you choose another artist out of three or yeah, so I give some it, advice of course the gallery is oh, I mean, not it is a live dialogue like that because of course you know who, which artists are connected to, to exactly. a specific gallery so you can go in and kind of make that yeah. kind of dialogue it's not imposing yeah. it's a suggestion yeah. and also in terms of words uh, we, we, we discuss they, they can choose but at the very end, the space belongs to the gallery. So yeah, it's yeah, the gallery yeah. that decides yeah. what yeah, they want to bring yeah, yeah. and how to yeah. hang the words and showcase the words. Okay. Yeah. If you look at the future, is there anything that that you are thinking that we want to go there or we want to accomplish this? I would like to get a lot of things <laughs> <laughs> yes of course <laughs> yeah uh, what I really would like is to to get the fair more out in the city more linked to communities to the communities to the institutions to museums this year we do for the first time this project that is called Unbound Cities and is about projects in the city uh, alongside uh, like exhibitions, uh, walkabouts, conferences. Uh, I mean, there will be like a very rich program that has already started. And at the very end, it's about education. So I would really like the fair to be to have a footprint all on all year round, not just for four days. That's my my goal. Actually. So this means that kind of working throughout the year with institutions who are already with all with galleries, with foundations, all. with artists, with like being really present in, in the culture. So it's not, of course, the, the fair has a commercial core. But here in Cape Town, as I mean, the cultural side is such an important side that I, I, I truly believe that it's worth to develop and work towards a, like a more a richer program, cultural okay. and educational yeah. program. Yeah. 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 I think this is also something that we we see that kind of tendency, uh, not so much in art fairs, but but in general in. in uh, in bigger exhibitions that wants to kind of connect to community, it may be com because community plays a role in, in our time. So of course, maybe because we lost community, I'm not sure, but but it plays a role. Eh? Uh, so yeah. yeah, so it makes makes very much sense, so to speak, eh? because many of my art fairs are very, as you say, also they are very restricted. Maybe because of the the commercial perspective eh? that exactly. it is difficult to to combine the two. Maybe yeah. not impossible. Thank you very much. Thank you for the conversation. Thank you for your time and yeah. for everything. During the conversation, the notion of Africa is underlined. It seems important for Laura Vicente to emphasize the fair as a general art fair presenting art in a broad international perspective. And hereby, she is distinguishing Cape Town Art Fair from Art Joburg who has chosen mainly to focus on art from Johannesburg. But also from the so-called African art fairs, such as 154 Contemporary African Art, whose recent edition has just taken place in Marrakesh a week earlier. Another aspect of the conversation we would like to highlight is the fact that she is an architect, spearheading an art fair. This draw our attention to the question of the relationship between contemporary art and architecture and which possible consequences it must have for this particular art fair. In another upcoming podcast, we will talk to two of the galleries participating in the art fair in Cape Town. They are both not galleries in the conventional sense but can better be understood as art projects. The Cape Town-based art forms, focusing on ceramics, 
and the Amsterdam-based No Man's Art Gallery, creating pop-up galleries and art projects in different places of the world. You have listened to a bonus track by Foreignness and Friendship. If you have built up an appetite for more, then you can follow us on thewhiteafricanblogspot.com and walk in our footsteps by stepping into In My Footstep WordPress.com. We broadcast new episodes of our radio show every first Tuesday of the month available on your preferred platforms.